I'm Stu Harrison and we're here at the Miriam Pianos Oakville showroom just outside of Toronto, Canada. And today I'm looking at the Kawhi GL10 Baby Grand Piano. And there's a couple of things we're going to be talking about. Uh, we're going to be comparing it to the GM10K, which was its immediate predecessor. There's a lot of information on the market about the GM10K. Uh, it was one of the best selling baby grand pianos in the country for probably close to a decade. Uh, and so people are familiar with it, uh, but we have been getting a lot of questions about how it's different than the GL10. Did they just rename it? Is it essentially just a rebrand? Uh, so I'm going to cover that. We're going to look at specifically exactly how those two instruments are different. Um, but more importantly and more fun, I'm also going to give this thing a real test drive. We're going to do a little bit of playing a bit later on uh, in the review. Um, and, and give you a chance at home uh, to listen to it. We're going to mic it up really nicely so you have a chance to, to get a taste. Uh, and then, of course, anytime you feel like coming down to any one of our showrooms, we've got GL10s ready to, uh, to give a play. So, we're going to get started. So, first of all, let's talk about the differences between the GL10 and the GM10. And I'm set up right beside a GM10 behind me so that we can actually physically see what those differences are as we're talking about them. So the first difference between the GL10 and the GM10 that I'm going to discuss is the action. Now, one of the things that always differentiated the GM10K from the rest of the Kawhi line was since the early 2000s, the GM10 was the only grand piano that Kawhi was making for the Canadian market that did not have the Millennium 3 action. And of course, the Millennium 3 action is Kawhi's rather uh, widely acclaimed carbon fiber action. Uh, fantastically light, very, very precise. Um, and they had their previous generation on the GM10, the ABS um, action, um, but they had reserved their best action for one above the GM10. So the first thing that, that's uh, obvious about the GL10 to the GM10 is that the action is a little more fluid. The repetition speed has actually come up a bit, which advanced players are going to really like. Uh, and you can definitely tell that the accuracy, particularly at lower dynamic ranges, has improved. Uh, so right off the bat, um, the touch between the two pianos, um, you can really uh, sense the difference as soon as you start to play. Along with the upgrade to the Millennium 3 Action Series that the GL10 has received, one other thing that the GL10 has, has also had updated is something that the entire GL line uh, has, has had developed by Kawhi, which is extended keys. Now, when I say this to people, they automatically start thinking that I'm talking about the, the white part of the key that they see and they play on is somehow bigger. Definitely not the case. The, the, the playable surface of the key has not changed at all. So what they're actually referring to is the lever behind this. And I'm just going to take this off so we can actually have a quick peek so you know exactly what I'm talking about. Now, any piano key, just like any lever, gets more accurate and more powerful the longer that the key gets. And so one of the things that people really notice when they play a nine foot piano versus a five foot piano is the touch is so much different, but nobody really ever talks about why that is. Well, one of the biggest reasons is the length of the key on a nine foot is substantially longer than what you would ever get on a baby grand. So what they've done on the GL10 is the length from the front of the key to this series of uh, pins, which is they call the balance rail, has been extended by about three quarters of an inch. And then the distance from the balance rail back to what they call the cap stand, which is where it comes in contact with the rest of the action, has also been extended by about a third of an inch. So in total, the entire key assembly on a GL10 is more than an inch longer than the GM10. That immediately has an effect on the power that you can command out of the instrument, but also the repetition speed and how accurately you can play particularly softly. So the, combi the combination of an extended key as well as a move to the full Millennium 3 quite frankly means that the GL10 now has a completely professional, totally top of the line feel, but still in a very, very affordable, nicely sized baby grand piano. Another difference between the GM10K and the GL10 is this. The GM10 was never equipped with a softball close system. The GL10, of course, has received that. So for young families with children apt to be pulling down on things, this is probably going to save a few pinched fingers, which is always a good thing. The last technical difference I'm going to touch on between the GL10 and the GM10 is how they construct the soundboard. Both the GM and the GL10 always had solid spruce soundboards, which for the price range was 
somewhat unique. They're not the only instruments uh, in the you know, $10,000, eleven, twelve thousand dollars range that have solid spruce, but it certainly isn't something that you should take for granted in the market. Many pianos at this price point have what they call surface tension or laminated soundboards. Uh, it may improve stability, uh, but it certainly does not improve sound. Solid spruce, generally speaking, on all pianos is always going to give you a clearer, better sustain and a much more complex tone. So here's what's different with the GL10 soundboard versus the GM10. The GL10 is now receiving a tapered soundboard. So what that means is as the soundboard gets closer to the edge or of the rim of the piano, it gets narrower. Now, this does a couple of things. As the energy or as the tension of the uh, soundboard increases or the rigidity of the soundboard increases, the closer it gets to the edge, by thinning it, you actually increase the usable area of the soundboard. Otherwise, if it remained the same thickness right to the edge, as it gets more rigid, you just have less of the soundboard that's going to be actually vibrating. So by tapering it, you increase the surface area that's actually usable. But the second thing it does is it also virtually guarantees that over time the crown of the soundboard is never going to be completely flat because of course if it's physically shaped that way you're never going to wind up with the same sort of distortion and standing waves that a flattened non-tapered soundboard would receive. I know it's a little bit technical but believe me in the long run investing in a piano with a tapered soundboard is going to preserve a great sound far longer into the future than one without. So now we're going to listen to the GL10. Now keep in mind this is a five foot piano and we're recording it with a Zoom H4N recording uh, device placed right in the middle of the piano. Uh, two little uh, stereo condenser microphones. That's the only uh, mic we've got on it. Uh, and it's just the straight sound, no editing, and that's what you're going to be hearing at home. So as close to what we can be hearing here is exactly what we're going to be giving you. Uh, so let's give this a, give this a try. For Baby Grand, that's a pretty amazing sound in terms of the depth of the tone, the complexity of the sound, and the sustain. When you look at the price range that this piano is in, which is uh, well under $20,000, it usually sits in the low teens depending on the market, uh, the value is absolutely extraordinary. So I hope you have a chance to come into one of Marion's showrooms, try the GL10, it's Kawhi's brand new update as we've said before. Thanks so much for listening. I'm Stu Harrison again with Marion Pianos.